the second student death at Syracuse University this week. A freshman died unexpectedly yesterday. We'll show you how students are honoring the memory of those who've passed. The deadline to fill out your census information is tonight. Find out how the census impacts everyone in Syracuse from city residents to SU students. And new checkout procedures before you head back home for Thanksgiving. Why SU is creating new procedures and more on your Citrus TV news update. Welcome to your Citrus TV news update. I'm Tony Bianco. Let's get started. SU says student activities can resume and gyms will reopen tomorrow. Vice Chancellor Mike Haney says the university is confident they have successfully contained a coronavirus cluster on campus. SU shut down all non-academic in-person activities last week. This came after a party caused a dramatic spike in COVID-19 cases on campus. And while gyms and student clubs can operate starting tomorrow, some restrictions are staying in place. In an email, Haney said 79% of all the positive cases this semester have been linked to off-campus events. For now, off-campus gatherings cannot exceed five students who don't live together. And anyone who hosts a party or lives at a house that does will be immediately referred to the Office of Student Rights and Responsibilities. The infection rate is dropping on campus. On the SU COVID-19 dashboard, there's six new cases among students on campus. 17 students have recovered. Now there's 86 active cases on campus and 18 students have left quarantine. There's currently 263 still in quarantine. While numbers on campus may be lower, Onondaga County is seeing a troubling rise in cases. County Executive Ryan McMahon says cases are rising because sick employees are going into work and infecting others. He's worried the county's public health efforts are slipping. At a briefing today, McMahon said, people need to stay home if they feel sick. So again, our ask, and uh, we've been saying this all week, is we need you to stay home when you're sick, get a COVID test. Uh, there is capacity. Syracuse University freshman died last night, the second student death in just two days on campus. John London died unexpectedly last night. He was a first year student studying magazine, newspaper, and digital journalism at Newhouse. He was from Tuckahoe, New York, living in Flint Hall here on campus. The cause of death is unclear. This comes just after the death of Trevor Daly Pierce on Tuesday. He was struck and killed by a trolley at the intersection of Waverly and Comstock Avenues. Students set up a memorial for the two students in front of Hendricks Chapel today. The end of semester checkout process for SU students living on campus will look different this fall. The university is asking students to pack up all of their belongings and label them with a shipping address in case students won't be brought back on campus in January. Students must reserve a checkout time online before November 6th and will have between November 14th and the 25th to move out. Students will also have to submit to saliva pool testing before they leave. All university residence halls are scheduled to close November 25th at noon. Today's the last day to fill out the U.S. Census. Citrus TV reporter Walker Simmons tells us how you can send in your info before tonight's midnight deadline and how this year's count impacts students on campus. The United States Census happens every 10 years, and 2020, the year America faces its most historical pandemic, is also the year the census is renewed. Here in Syracuse, the deadline to fill out the census is coming to a close. The last chance to fill out the nationwide headcount is tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. The director of the Census Bureau's New York Regional Office, Jeff Baylor, says this is something that impacts everyone. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of federal funding. Uh, that have provided to communities based upon formulas that use census data. So when you think of things like roads, uh, mass transit systems, money comes into a, a city like Syracuse based upon the population. And if you take away college students who use those roads, who use mass transit systems, you're going to receive less funding than what you truly deserve. And even though 99% of New York's population has already been accounted for, Baylor says COVID-19 has had a major impact on how this process is completed. If you look back at 2010, 61.7% was the self-response rate, the final self-response rate for the city of Syracuse compared to what it is now, 54.8%. And, and I can tell you for, from a partner perspective, our partners have been so engaging and have been conducting so much, so much outreach. Uh, what has hurt us really, and especially in these urban areas, is the ability to, to really reach people directly one-on-one. -on -one. 
So with the deadline less than 12 hours away, it's vital to fill out the census to ensure a better future for the next 10 years for the Syracuse community. For Citrus TV, Walker Simmons. Thanks, Walker. Again, you can fill out the census online tonight. Make sure you do it before midnight if you want to be counted. And it's a beautiful day on campus, hopefully not the last of the semester. Weather anchor Ashley Winskowski is here to tell us if there are more gorgeous days ahead. Thanks guys. Looking outside right now, it's hovering around 64 degrees. We are seeing those clouds that rolled in earlier in the day today. So we have mostly cloudy skies right now and then winds of about 12 miles an hour. We are seeing this storm system roll in from the west. As you can see, our future radar, it is about to get very rainy. We're going to see those downpours all throughout the night. So definitely don't forget to bring an umbrella with you wherever you're going. Looking ahead to tonight, high around 50 degrees. Again, we're gonna see that rain all throughout the night, so definitely bring a rain jacket and about an 80% chance of rain all night long. So looking like a washout for sure. And then looking ahead to tomorrow, more of the same, more of that rain. Not a lot of temperature variation, as you can see, 49 degrees at 9 a.m. goes up to only 50 degrees at 6 p.m. The rain is going to stop sometime in the evening hours tomorrow around 5, 6 p.m. So we are going to see about a good 24 hours of that soaking rain that we haven't seen in a while. So definitely just be prepared for that. And then our five day forecast tomorrow, pretty much a washout seeing that heavy rain all day, but then it does clear up on Saturday, mostly sunny skies and a high of 57 degrees. So Saturday looks like a great day for some outdoor activities. And then going rainy again the beginning of next week, seeing those showers and highs in the upper 50s. That's all for me today. Back to you guys. Syracuse football had a rough week after the loss of two key players. Their roster is in a rough spot as they prepare to face off against the Liberty University Flames in the Dome on Saturday. Sports anchor Gil Gross is here with everything you need to know about Syracuse sports. We might not see Tommy DeVito again in 2020. Welcome to sports. I'm Gil Gross. The Syracuse starting quarterback took a sack in the fourth quarter against Duke. He exited the game, went to the locker room, and came back on crutches. Dino Baber said right after the game, it's not looking good, and it's not. Multiple reports say DeVito is likely done for the season. After losing star safety Andre Sisko as well, it kind of feels like there's a dark cloud hanging over the orange, but head coach Dino Baber says that's just football. You know, football's physical, and that's the part that makes us different from other sports, and it's the part that we embrace. And we understand that people are going to get hurt, and that next guys have to step up, and then eventually guys will get an opportunity to come back. But it's what makes the game unique. It's the reason why you love the game, and we love the game, and we accept that part of it. So it's time for SU to find that next man up at the quarterback position. The most obvious answer is Rex Culpepper, because unlike all the other options, he's got a little bit of experience. The fifth-year senior has thrown for over 500 yards with three touchdowns and four interceptions in his time as backup. The other options, Dylan Markovitz, Jacoby, and Morgan, they're both true freshmen. Culpepper is listed as the starting quarterback on this week's depth chart, but keep in mind that's not a full guarantee that he'll be under center to start the first drive against Liberty. The Flames are 4-0 on the year. They have yet to face a Power 5 opponent or even a team with a winning record, so that's a little bit uncertain. Nonetheless, they look to be improved from the team that lost 24-0 to Syracuse last season. They have a new starting quarterback, Auburn transfer Malik Willis, and their running back Josh Mack is averaging over six yards per carry. Mack is actually coming back home from, for this one. He's a Rochester native. In the MLB Championship Series tonight, the Rays get another crack at closing out the Astros after going up 3-0 in that series. They're one game away from the World Series. The Dodgers are trying to claw their way back into the series against the Braves. Los Angeles could tie the series at two tonight with a win. This has been Sports. I'm Gil Gross. Back to you guys. And that's all for the Citrus TV News Update. We'll be back in studio tomorrow, so make sure you watch Friday Live at 6. Follow Citrus TV News on Instagram and Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Check out our news, entertainment, and sports tabs six days a week on Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'm Tony Bianco. Have a great night, Syracuse.